we're going to talk through um, our Kanban board style project management and resource management here in Workamajig. Uh, specifically, we'll be looking at the assignment management tool and um, and it's kind of partner on the Creatives Today page. These are two different views for um, for a resource or project manager versus an individual and their tasks. And this is a little bit different than our standard method of project management, which would be that card or grid view for time entry and task management. This really allows you to set and prioritize tasks according to um, certain task statuses. And it also allows your creatives to kind of, or you or your creatives to kind of move those cards between those statuses. Uh, this tends to be a bit more conducive to agile style project management. Our card and, and grid view are really set up for more critical path or waterfall style um, schedule creation. So we'll be going over those pieces here today. We'll take a look at um, a few example templates. I've built some simple templates uh, for agile management. They're not necessarily meant to be pulled out directly and used as they are. They're more kind of example workflow pieces. They'd obviously be something that you'd adopt for um, any need that you have for your agency. But um, but I've got a couple just to kind of show you how the tool will work from an agile perspective. Um, and I'll take you through all of the setup and, and operation for those pieces. Um, so again, we'll begin here in a moment. Um, if you're following along, there is a specific security right for this page here, the assignment management page. Uh, if you're an admin or you're a high level user, you'll typically have access to it. But even project managers don't have this page enabled by default. Um, partially because we try to create the system to be a very directed, we're trying to make the, the training and implementation of it um, fairly easy while maintaining a lot of use uh, functionality and different use case pieces in the system. So um, it's one of those tools that you may have to bring out. I'll show you that security uh, right to, to do that. But if you are following along and you don't see this here, it's probably because you need the security right to enable that. Okay, so you know, let's go ahead and jump in here and get started. Um, for anyone that just arrived, uh, again, we are going to be looking at Kanban style project management here at Workamajig and kind of agile workflows, how those two relate to each other. Specifically, that's going to center around two pages, uh, really two pages that mirror each other. One is the assignment management page here. Uh, this is a resourcing tool we have that looks at week long dashes for tasks. And the big wrinkle for this page, there's a lot to it, but the big wrinkle for it is that these different columns here will set the task priority or statuses for your tasks. So as opposed to just kind of creating a bunch of tasks and having them plop on a dashboard, it allows you to say, okay, not only do I have a number of tasks here um, kind of in a bucket to be worked on, but I can kind of prioritize which ones I'm working on. And there's an information flow back and forth between uh, the project or resource manager tool here, the assignment management tool, where I can look at any specific user and see what's on their plate and make specific recommendations. Um, and then the, the opposite side of that, let's move one over here for now so you can see, the opposite side of that, which would be the Creatives Today page. Um, this page, there is a tile view that mirrors that look. So I mentioned earlier that that view is disabled by default the same uh, as this tile view. This is actually not something that's here and on in the system by default. It's something that you have to turn on. Uh, again, that's just partially so that you can be specific about your intentions if you do that. We're trying to make the system as easy as possible to use for someone that just jumps into it. And having all of these different options and places to go can be a little bit confusing. So we're really focusing around these two pages here. Um, these are kind of what make this workflow work. And then we'll also talk about templates because if you're going to run a more agile style of project management, you don't have to, to do agile to use this screen or take advantage of it. Uh, my clients that use it, uh, I would say at least half of them do use critical path or um, waterfall style project management, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you're going to use agile, this is probably the tool um, that you want to use. A combination of this tile view and the assignment management uh, review right over here. Now, I kind of just dived right into this here or dove right into this, excuse me. Uh, but if you have questions, I will kind of try to stop at certain points throughout the webinar here to address them. So if you want to put those questions into chat or put them in the Q&A, I will look at those. Um, I promise. I will try to get to all of them, and I will try to leave a few minutes at the end of the call for any of those that I've missed here. So if you think of anything, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and chat those questions out. Um, and I will kind of stop at certain points and go ahead and address those. 
Um, additionally, if this is your first webinar, or even if it's not and you're just unaware, we do uh, record all of these webinars and we upload them to our support site. Um, if you just type in the search bar in there, webinar, you will find a link, uh, a list of our upcoming webinars um, or our past webinars with the video links to view those. So, uh, so if you miss any part of this or you have to run or you just want to review it for later, it will be on our support site, typically within a day or so after the, the webinar training. We try to get those up there as soon as possible. Okay, so let's start with a few house cleaning pieces here first. Um, I mentioned that the assignment management tool is off by default and that the creatives today page also has a tile view that's off by default for both of these. Um, if we go into system setup and look at the security rights, uh, that's typically what's preventing this page from showing up. So if I jump into my system setup and I go into the security settings, um, the option that you're looking for here, I normally just go ahead and select the security group, right? So if it, you're wanting to add this for your project managers or you are a project manager with admin rights and you want to add this for your team, um, you know, select the security group that you want to go to here and then type in assignment. Uh, the, um, the tool that the specific right you're looking for is traffic assignment management screen. Um, you can actually provide both of these, but this one's a legacy, right? So um, this is the one that actually unlocks that screen on that page for whatever security group. So my traffic and project managers have the right to view that assignment management screen. If you're not seeing it um, or your team is not seeing it, that is almost certainly the reason why. That is hidden by default here and that's how you turn that on. And I think I saw that. Yeah, it looks like somebody, somebody posed that question. So hopefully that answers that for you, Lynn. Um, the other half of this is the Creatives Today page. Uh, if we look at the Creatives Today page, the default view for this is the card view. Uh, you're probably familiar with this if you've been in Work on a Jig. This is the default page for every new user, regardless of your role. Um, and it's a pretty central page to production team members and designers. Um, so this is the standard card view. Uh, the tile view is a third option on this page. Again, it is disabled by default. You can access it by clicking this link up here. And if you're an admin um, or, uh, or you have the rights to change platinum system settings, you can add or remove, I guess, the, car, the tile view here by going into your system settings. And if we scroll down a little bit here, you'll see an option for show tile view. Uh, that is what actually makes this show up here for you. Now, we hide this but for, for a reason. I will kind of circle back around to why and then how to utilize this. I have some teams that mandate only the tile view. I have some that have the tile view for only certain um, certain departments or, or divisions of their company. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about those settings here. But if you just want to turn it on here for now and allow your team to access it, this is the option that you'd use right here. Now let's take a look at the assignment management side. I'm actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and create a new tab here. Um, we're going to keep two open because we're going to bounce between a creative view um, and the assignment management or kind of the project manager resource view here. So to start um, looking at the assignment management page, let's talk about how this page works here, what it does, where it pulls tasks from and how to use it. Uh, so to start here, uh, whenever you pull this page up, it asks you for a number of different filter options here. Uh, so it doesn't pull detail by default. Uh, it basically says, okay, what kind of information do you want to pull here? And if you just click search, it pulls everybody. But if you're a larger agency with a lot of different employees, um, you can get specific about which department or service, for example, that you want to pull up. Uh, most agencies I've found will typically just come in here and search. Um, that will pull open everybody here in the agency. Uh, and it will show uh, show a level of detail here about those uh, about those users. Um, I think I saw somebody raise their hand. If you, if you did, go ahead and place a chat um, in the box or in the keyway there, and I, I will get to those here in a moment. Um, so when you search the screen here, it will show you all of your users here from left to right. Um, by default, it will alphabetize them. So that's why Anne's first and Lance Freelance here is a bit towards the end. Uh, there's a slider underneath all the names to allow you to get back and forth between the different members of your agency. Um, and if you click on any one specific person here, it will go ahead and pull open the details of the tasks assigned to them. Now, the default columns in here are work to be done, do this today and completed. I've added a priority one as part of one of my training calls once upon a time, and so that's in here. I'll show you how to adjust these. Um, but effectively, what you're seeing here is, uh, you know, each individual person underneath their name, you'll see the number of hours allocated to them per day. So while this screen may not be quite as uh, concerned about things like uh, the staff, how the staff schedule would be about the total number of hours per week or per day, that allocation information is still something that we pull open um, 
uh, the pill open here into this page. You'll see underneath their name here from left to right, uh, m the Monday to Friday allocation. So this is basically saying, hey, for the eight hours here, this is eight hours on Monday, this is two hours on Wednesday, and so on and so forth. Basically kind of showing you the entire week's worth of work here. And on the right-hand side here, you may see this little green bar. This actually will start to fill up more and more as there are more hours assigned to a user. Uh, so as they get closer to a 40-week uh, allocation for the week, it will turn yellow at, I believe, 35-ish hours. I can't remember what the warning level is. Um, and then it will turn um, red afterwards here. So um, aside from that here, again, I clicked on the name of the user and underneath we see all of the tasks that are assigned. Now this is the information that are coming from the project schedules that this user is assigned to. So that, that basically any project where, um, any active project where this user has assignments will show up here. And every task assigned will end up in this work to be done uh, column here by default. So uh, basically if you assign someone to a new task, it's gonna make an entry in this column here for you. And then the rest of these would be pieces that you've manually moved. The only times that we will automatically move tasks in these columns are to move them to completed if someone happens to have marked it as completed but not moved it over there. We will do that for you. Um, but anything else, things like do this today or priority, these would be items that you would move specifically or that your teammate would or team member would move specifically. Uh, with the idea being that you could come in here and take a look at the workload for a user. Uh, the tasks that show in here are going to be the tasks that fit the date range that we're looking for. This screen always looks at one specific date uh, or excuse, uh, one specific week. And it's basically saying any tasks that have a plan date that fall within that range um, will be pulled into here. So they don't have to start or stop in this week. It just have to have activity in this week. So even if it's like a six month long task, that's fine. It's going to show in here so long as those six months match over this time period, right? Some part of it occurs over this time period here. Then from here, once you've got the uh, the task list in here, the design is basically that you could come through and say, okay, looks like I've got a copywriting task here. I want you to work on this. I want you to work on these revisions and I want you to work on implementation. And I found that uh, for some of my agencies, they actually kind of uh, train this as, this is the order that I'm working these tasks in. So there's a couple of use cases here. One, you can basically say, hey, um, these are the tasks as a resource or a project manager that I want you to work on today, right? Again, pull these over here and say, hey, I want you to work on this development task. I want you to work on this graphic design task. And I want you to work on this uh, web content development task here. And I may even want you to work these in order. Uh, that's kind of up to you. Not every agency is that, that specific, but you know, some are. And in the, in the card here, you actually have the option to add traffic comments to these here as well. So this is a way for you to pass down information to the user from the screens once you're making these, uh, you know, these prioritizations and you're saying, hey, these are the three things I really want you to work on here today. Um, you can in these drop downs here say, hey, um, you know, please, uh, you know, please get this out by 2 p.m. or something like that. Uh, just throwing something out there and it will actually be on the card. And part of the point of this, it's going to drive me crazy if I don't fix this. Uh, part of the point of this is that this information will mirror on that tile view of the Creatives Today page. Um, so if we go over to the Creatives Today page here, and I refresh the view here real quick, it will have these columns and these cards sorted exactly how I had them on the resource manager screen, right? My note for the get this out by 2 p.m. is on the card here. Um, along with the specific cards that I slotted over. So it's meant to be a back and forth communication between a creative and a resource manager, um, you know, what's going on for a particular day. So sometimes uh, for some of my agencies, you know, this is largely driven by project or resource managers. They'll come in at the beginning of the day or a beginning of a week and move items over, kind of depending on how they manage traffic and how they resource tasks. Um, on the flip side of this, it works the other way around too. I can, as a creative, come in here and go, oh, you know what? I really need to get this planning task done. I'm going to put that into the priority column here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to scratch this web content development task for now. And again, that will feed here. So if I look at this screen, any changes made on the Creatives Today page will reflect here on the assignment management page. Kind of has a back and forth here. Um, I see some questions coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and address some of those here. But real quick before I do that, um, one of the other things I want to point out here from an hourly and, and resourcing perspective is each one of these columns has a number next to them. So it says do this today 3.4 or work to be done 3.4. Um, this is the number of 
hours in this period uh, or the, the number of hours uh, that are total in here. So if you move items over to do this today, I, obviously we'd probably be soft targeting about an eight hour workload for that day. Um, but it's letting you know, hey, for the tasks that you have here currently, um, the do this today shows that there's 3.4 hours that you've put into this column or that they, the creative has put into this column. Okay, so I had a few questions. I want to get to those here real quick, um, and then we'll kind of delve a little bit further into this. Um, the uh, the tasks, uh, Angela asked where the tasks uh, assigned to a particular user are coming from. These are actually from the project schedules of these projects. So when we look at this task here, for example, and I jump into the schedule of this project, the reason it's showing up is because on the project schedule, it says, hey, you know, this person, Daniel Anderson, is assigned to web content development for five hours um, you know, over these time periods. So the system is picking up that this task is active over that period and it's placing it in this column here. Um, th th there's another question here about whether these columns are customizable. They are. Um, I haven't gotten to that quite yet, but under the more option from this page, you can edit the assignment statuses. That's basically saying, I'm going to edit these. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So I'll give you a bit more detail here in a moment. Um, Kathleen will let you know um, kind of how to do that and what that looks like. Um, in case you missed a, how to get to this screen here, you can get to the screen from the main menu under resource manager and assignment management. Um, if you missed the beginning of the call, there is actually a specific security right to be able to access this page. And so if you don't have that right enabled, you're, you're not gonna be able to get to the screen if you're not an admin, uh, you will need to reach out to an admin to, to be able to give you access to it. Um, Alex is asking why these hours don't match the staff schedule exactly. Uh, they they should in most scenarios, Alex. I mean, it's pulling the same detail and it's pulling it in the same way. So if there is a difference between a user or, or users on the staff schedule or in this weekly period, uh, you may want to send that information to your account manager so we can take a peek um, for you. In most scenarios, the, actually, I think in every scenario, these should, these should match. It's basically doing the same thing the staff schedule would where it's looking at the total amount of hours allocated for a task and spreading those hours evenly over the duration of that task. Um, the only time I could think of when they wouldn't match is if you've manually allocated hours on the staff schedule, um, but that's a separate question. Um, Lynn's asking if you can filter by client. When you pull this page up, it'll actually pull out a list of filters for you. Um, I don't believe client is one of the options here because the idea would typically be that you're resourcing a group of tasks or for a specific uh, end of the department. So no, no client-based filter in here, um, but there are a number of filters for user, office, department, um, service, things like that that you can pull open. Uh, there's a question here too about to do just a couple more here and then I'm going to jump back into this here um, for to do's there is actually a view that looks somewhat like this it's called the to do port but it's an actually it's an actually a separate breakout um, on these cards you'd actually be able to see to do's if they've been added. Uh, it will just say at the bottom, hey, there's two open to-dos or something like that. Um, but there's actually a separate screen for managing to-dos. I'm going to try to get to that towards the end of the call, uh, time, time permitting. Um, but but you can see to-dos from here, but the primary management screen for them would actually be simple, uh, be different, excuse me. Yeah, um, Angela is asking if I can show an example of the tasks on a schedule to see how how they flow into here. Um, I, I did show one a moment ago, but hopefully this this uh, this counted here. So this task says it's due on March 31st, but the reason it's pulling into this the assignment management page here in this time period is if I look on the schedule of this project, it's saying, hey, for implementation, this task starts this week. It actually starts today um, and it runs through March 31st, right? So it shows activity on this task in that time period. Um, and then it will go ahead and place that down. Um, onto the the assignment management page. You'll basically put it into the bucket of tasks here. Um, if a task isn't scheduled to be due today, but is moved into the do this today column, it does not change the schedule. No, we actually don't change the dates on any of these except for actuals. If you mark something as completed, we will change the actual, the plan complete date. Um, but other than that, none of the moving between these columns will change the plan dates for your task. It's actually pulling that information to determine, you know, whether or not it should show up here. Everything else from this here is, is you manually moving tasks around. Um, okay, so uh, so quite a few more questions here. I am actually going to come back to some of these uh, because I want to jump back into this. So if I haven't answered your question yet, I, I promise you I will try to get to these, but I want to kind of get through more of this and how this works here. Um, so hang tight with me here 
uh, real quick and uh, make your question maybe be answered uh, through some of the um, through some of the the features I show you here. So. When we had left off, uh, what we were looking at is kind of these columns themselves, right? We looked at how the tasks came in and, and selecting a specific user here, and then how this information feeds back and forth from the assignment management page to the Today Creative page. Um, so, you know, aside from that here, uh, just structurally, the, the page here itself, the settings for it, um, I did want to jump into that. There were some questions here, and I think that this is pretty big to the operation of this page here. Um, I mentioned the edit assignment statuses tool here is the one that actually allows you to define these. Um, so there's a couple things here, like every system settings um, in in uh, in Platinum here, you have the ability to set a company default, which basically means, hey, for any new user here, this is what they would see for statuses. Um, the statuses, again, the defaults for them are work to be done, do this today and completed. Priority is a status that I have added um, separately. So, you know, you can add your own if you want here. Uh, you can actually click over the top of these and change the name for them. So that kind of comes back to that question of does do this today, change this today. I could actually did change this to do this this week. You can kind of name it whatever you want here. Um, we don't really mess with the dates at this level. We allow you to define these columns however you'd like. Um, so, you know, you can define the statuses here. If you insert row, it will give you a new status uh, that you can add to the list here. Um, and you also have two other options here for a default percentage complete. This sets the tasks percentage complete uh, for when you move it into a column. Um, typically, we structure it like this, where it's zero for everything except for completed, and we let a user manually decide if there's a percentage complete. Um, remember that if there's any percent marked complete for a task, um, Workamajig will consider that task started and give it an actual start date. Um, so if I put do this today as 1% even, and we move something into that column, um, Work on a Jig will consider that task as having been started, and it will lock in an actual start and plan start date for it. Um, some agencies want that. I just wanted to make sure I bring that up here. Um, most scenarios, I see it used like this here, where basically it's saying, hey, whenever I move a task into completed, it will automatically mark that task as 100% complete. Uh, you also have an option here for which column is default. You can only have one default, and by default, that is work to be done. Uh, that's just saying whenever new tasks are added, which column are they placed into? They are placed into that work to be done column over here. Um, aside from that here, you do have some system settings for this page here as well that I want to point out. Um, one of the more important ones here is the completed predecessors only option. Uh, there's a lot of information in here. Um, I do think I saw a question here regarding uh, if you can adjust the maximum number of daily hours. You can. That's actually right here. Um, here's your warning threshold. That basically means any task over this amount will trigger a yellow warning um, and kind of let you know, hey, we're getting closer. I've got this really low for mine here. And then a critical threshold for, hey, when do we give you a red status bar um, for the, the, uh, the number of hours here? Uh, but aside from that here, again, completed predecessors only is telling the system to only bring up tasks that are currently ready to work. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I have agent clients that use this um, two different ways. It's kind of up to you, but just note that this is showing, um, you know, tasks that are ready to work or not. Right now I'm saying hide anything that's not ready to work. I think the most important thing about this task is to make sure that this option here is consistent with the default for the Today Creatives page. If you show predecessors only here, do the same thing on that page, and I'll show you where to do that here in a moment. Okay, um, aside from that here on the left-hand side, you'll also see the ability to assign work. Uh, I wanna go over this quickly. Um, this is uh, basically any unassigned work in the time period that we're looking at. So it's saying, hey, in this week here, um, I see a number of different tasks that are on your schedules that have nobody assigned to them currently. Um, so this is actually something you can use to assign these tasks. You can actually filter this. Um, if we click into the pencil, there's a number of filter options that will come out here for you. Uh, so you could filter to only projects in a certain status, for example, um, only certain department services or offices. So if you want to look at only your copywriters, for example, and see the work that's needed versus your copywriters up here, um, that's something you could do, right? I could say, hey, let's do that, right? Let's look at only art direction, and then we'll look at only people that provide the art direction service. Um, aside from that here too, you, there's also a text-based search. So I could search a specific project number or a client name, something like that, and it will pull open those unassigned tasks here. Uh, this is also a panel that can be collapsed if you want some more room on the resourcing side. So this one is specifically for any unassigned services. Um, and you can actually click and drag these 
to users to assign them from here. So this concepting task, for example, that's been sitting here for forever, I can click and drag and drop that and it will assign that to me here um, on this page. It's got an undefined here for now, but there we go. So there we go, it goes ahead and updates that here for us. And it will also update your resourcing hours when you do that. Um, additionally, you can actually make reassignments from here as well. So if I look at somebody and say, oh, you know what, do this for today is you know 10 or 11 hours, I can actually click and drag tasks from here and assign them to other users as well. Uh, you'll see that little black bar come up around their names here. And if I drop this on Candace here, for example, it will update the resourcing hours here for us as well. Uh, may have to refresh the screen to get those, but um, but you'll see that actually makes that reassignment to the user from here. A uh, couple of other pieces from this page here, you can create projects, tasks, and to-dos from this page. You can create conversations and meetings from here if needed. Um, but again, the primary function is that it would match what you see on the Today Creative page here and allow communication back and forth between a project manager uh, or resource manager and the assigned users to your tasks. Now I'm gonna pivot here a little bit to the Today Creative page here uh, for a moment, uh, but let me jump into a few more questions here um, and then we'll kind of continue. Um, I, I have a question here regarding uh, if you have a certain amount of time um, scheduled for a task, but you only want a user to work a couple of it for today. Um, you actually can't do that by default. Workamajig is basically aggregating the total number of hours. So if we have a 10 hour task and it's over a five day duration, by default, what we do is spread that task out in two hour chunks over those five days. Um, but then we uh, adjust for the actual. So if a user, you know, we know that your team's probably not going to work it like that. Um, they may work a lot of it on the front of the, pro uh, the you know, that plan dates or towards the end of it. That's perfectly fine. Um, every day we reallocate those hours. So in that same scenario, you know, 10 hours over five days, if your user puts five hours in the first day, we just recalculate that and say, oh, okay, there's only five hours left remaining over the next four days. And then we kind of bring all that information in together. Um, so you can't really uh, per day set the specific amount of time you want a task to be resourced. The idea is that the system would handle most of that for you. Um, now that said, for longer term projects, you do have some control over when the time is resourced, but that would be on a weekly level. Um, I have a question here regarding uh, if you have a six month retainer, would it be best to have multiple tasks instead of one large task for the six month period? Um, you know, that's really up to you. Uh, you know, for the question of agile, I tend to see uh, typically they're smaller project schedules. I think the question is whether you're breaking out the work to multiple different disciplines. Um, from the page that we're looking at, it really doesn't care whether you have one task or a hundred. All it cares about is the assignments that are on those tasks. Um, so it's a really difficult question to answer in a, in a vacuum, Angela, I'm sorry. Um, I, most of the time I try to encourage my clients to have to not go too crazy with the number of tasks in their schedule um, while maintaining the integrity of what you're trying to do, right? We're keeping a workflow or we're making sure that we have buckets um, that we can logically bucket uh, or uh, we can largely logically budget and, and account for on um, staffing and resourcing screens. Uh, you can't view tasks on the screen in a monthly scale. Uh, a question from JT. This is always uh, a week to week basis. However, you can look in the future or in the past here if you want. So I can look to next week um, or I could pick a specific time frame um, to look at those. But by design, the screen works on weekly dashes. Um, this view can be customized by department. Um, that's a question here. One of the things I was showing here when you look at the edit assignment statuses page here is that you can for specific security groups have different column sets. So I could say, hey, my account managers actually have a different view than my creative production team. Um, if you look here, my agile production team actually has a couple of different options that I've added to the view. And this is actually something I've seen from some of my clients um, who, who use agile style project management or use this screen even without agile style project management is that they'll say, oh, part of my team uses this and they're in this security group. And that allows you to define for them that you're overriding the company defaults and having members of that security group specifically, um, you know, specifically see a different view. Um, yeah, so each department uh, regarding whether they'd have a different bucket of tasks, the tasks are specific to the assignment to the users, right? So if I'm looking at a department, it would be all of the users of that department and the more specifically the tasks assigned to the people that are part of that department. 
Um, for the question here, I'm going to take a couple more. Um, someone asked, uh, Andrew asked, how does a creative get notified when you make a comment on the task cell? Um, that actually just shows up on the page. So if I go on this planning task here, um, oh, it actually looks like I have some things. Um, I'm going to say some comments here, and then I'm going to prove to you guys that I can count to five. Um, those, that comment will appear on the card. Right, some comments here, you can see that, and it will also just appear on this page. So the idea in Workamagic is typically that your creatives would kind of live out of this screen here, um, and that would give them the details of the project and tasks that they have. There's no system notification or email that's sent. It just places the comment on the card for them. Um, Denise asks if you can see unassigned work in the staff schedule as well. You actually can. Um, if you open up the staff schedule, you'll see a little blue icon next to any role that has unassigned hours on it. If you click it, it actually shows you the cards for these just like you see here. So it would be more specific to, hey, I'm clicking on this and it shows um, copywriting, for example. Um, but, but yes, you can see those. Okay. Um, oh, I see, yes. Uh, someone's saying that they're seeing a discrepancy between assignment management and staff schedule because meetings, actually meetings should be resourced on this page. Um, so Lane, I, I may want to see the details of that. If you can send an email of the details of that error to support at workamagic.com, uh, we can take a look at that for you. They should be the same thing here. I don't have any meetings right now in my test site here, but if I did, they should show up and they should be resourced here. And they should also account for the number of hours in a daily period for a user. Um, Lynn, the reason that you have fewer filter options is because um, uh, you may not have offices or departments showing. Um, if you're not using offices or departments in your instances, they'll typically be hidden here um, because there's no reason to show them to you. But yeah, if you're seeing fewer filters, that's probably it. Okay, um, I've got a couple more here I want to ask uh, or, or want to answer. Um, Jennifer asked if you can change the weekly availability. Um, yes, that's pretty common for the staff schedule. You can also do that here. If you remember, that's in the system settings for this page. Um, you can change the maximum daily hours right here. So you could set this to 7.5, for example, to build that buffer in. Um, uh, there's a question here. Is there an overall agency dashboard for high level project overviews? I I'd probably need you to be a little bit more specific on what you're looking for there, Trevor. Um, there are some other screens that can give you details of uh, your projects themselves. I mean, the, the most the most common one is probably the project manager projects page. Uh, I think sometimes people forget this page is customizable. Um, just remember that here in the system settings, you can change the columns you see here. Uh, this would be a big top level piece uh, for your projects. There's also a number of reports in the system that you could use as well. So depending on what you're looking for specifically, um, we probably have a solution, but um, I need a bit more information to give you a, a, a more directed answer. Um, okay, two more here. I've got one from Candice. This is, uh, can you add another column on the Today Creatives page? Uh, yes, you can. Actually, um, and for projects that are ongoing and run throughout the year, that is a great question. Actually, that's something that I often um, recommend for my clients or at the very least to just to push those dates to the end so it moves those cards to the bottom. Um, but any, any columns you define on this assignment management page here, when you come into this edit assignment statuses page, um, it, will give, it will place these columns on the Creatives Today page for you. Um, so changing them here will change them on the Creatives Today page. Okay, so um, so let's uh, let's move on here a little bit. Let's take a look at the creative side page of this here. Uh, this shouldn't take terribly long, but I do want to talk through this side um, again. This does mirror what a resource manager would see on the assignment management page. They're meant to communicate back and forth. Um, the workflow is that a user can you know either define their own tasks by moving them in between the columns here, or they can come in and see what their resource or project manager has set for them. What I find most of the time is most of the time creatives are driving, you know, hey, these are the tasks I'm working on with a project or resource manager finding some particularly um, needy task or project and saying, hey, I put this in priority or I put this in do this today. I'm at the top of the list for you. Um, so those are all kind of viable use cases there. Uh, I think if you've seen the other side here, you've basically seen this, but from a creative, the difference, of course, is that the at the end of the day, when they've completed a task, they can move something into the completed column. Um, that will update these to 100% complete automatically. I've got a bunch of to-dos on this. Um, just ignore that for now. If you don't use to-dos, that's perfectly fine. Um, but when you move a task to 100% completed, it will stay here. This is actually something I find that creatives kind of like the best. Uh, I mean, aside from the columns on this screen here, um, some of the feedback I get is that you know, on our traditional card view, when you mark something as complete, it just kind of disappears from view. 
right? So if I come in here and I say, hey, this is 100% complete, this task kind of just disappears into the ether, right? It's gone. Um, well, that's by design, so we kind of clear the task for you. But um, on this page, the completed column will stay here until the end of the week. Um, next week, it will actually refresh and it will only show tasks completed in that week, but you'll always have kind of the list of tasks that you finished in a specific week here by going back to that week on this view here. It will show you everything that you'd marked as completed, um, and then it will only refresh when it goes to a new week. It will just kind of show an empty column there for you. A um, couple of other things I mentioned here too, um, you know, we can move those between the columns here. The rest of these task cards really actually work the same as you'd see them in the card view. You have the folder here to access certain parts of the project. You can, of course, enter time through the clock here. Um, but from a system setup standpoint, under the more button here in system settings, remember that you cannot see this tile view until you enable it on this page. I'm gonna, gonna cover that one more time here. That's a little bit down the way here on the tile view. And moreover, if I'm training an entirely new client and this is a view that they're interested in, oftentimes I actually recommend that they kind of mandate this view. You can actually disable the other views, like I could disable card and grid view. Um, and so when I go to train my creatives on this page, I, I basically just tell them, hey, this is how it works. Um, it, it tends to be easier to communicate these things to your team if you, you know, if you have one standard for how, one truth for how the system works, at least by default. Um, or at least for a specific department, right? Uh, some larger teams I have will say some are on the tile view, some are on the, the card view. That's perfectly fine too. Um, but for the most part, I typically recommend that if you want to use this style of project management, if you want to use this Kanban style, if you want to use that assignment management page as kind of your primary resourcing tool, oftentimes it makes sense to actually just limit the views that are offered here and just train that one view. Um, because one of the big things that you lose in the card view um, between the tile and the card view here is that if, um, did I not enable that? Hello? There it is. I may, let's bring all that back. I guess I'll just refresh the page here. Uh, one of the things that you lose between, oh, it's just hiding from me here now, um, between the grid and the card view is that on the card view side, um, you don't actually see any of those task status columns. So this page does not care if you've moved something into do this today or priority. It is an entirely separate way of managing ta tasks. So, um, so just know that that's the case. That's one of the reasons that I often mandate that if your project managers are heavily utilizing this page and specifically utilizing the column sets in this page, then you typically want to drive your team towards that tile view. Um, for teams that are active, it's it's not a terribly difficult transition because if your team is already using these cards, most of it will make sense. The only wrinkle is that now they're moving stuff back and forth between columns, right? Um, that's really the biggest change on this page for them. Um, and just like I mentioned on the, the other side here, I don't want to overcomplicate this, but again, you can look and have specific security groups have this work different. So again, my creative production team has a different set of rights on this page than the company defaults. Um, that's something that you can do, right? I have two of the same security group. I have some of the members of my team in Agile and some of them using this traditional card view. Um, if we look actually between the two, that's what we would see. I've changed this around so much now that they probably aren't the same, but <laughs> um, but there we go, right? There's uh, You have the option to change those around for certain users here. Um, so from here, I do want to talk about kind of setting up projects that kind of utilize this and some, talk about some of the templates um, and, and how I've structured them. Again, they're not necessarily a, a ironclad requirement, but they're something I put together as an example. Um, before I do that, let me jump into a few more questions here. Um, uh, and then we'll we'll circle back to this. So uh, I had a question here about what shows up in meetings. That's on the assignment management page here, this one here. Uh, if you click that meetings tab, uh, that's for resourcing purposes specifically. Um, it's also slightly so that you can schedule. If you're looking at a specific day, you can click on meetings here and see, oh, okay, this person has a meeting on, you know, Wednesday at 10 a.m. to, you know, for this. Um, that will pull through here. That's actually one of the major reasons we ask you to sync your calendar with Workamajig so that we can resource meeting detail for you. Um, but this will show the details of any meeting on the Workamagic calendar that is marked as block off. It's the, it works the same as the staff schedule is if you're familiar with that. Um, basically, we resource the time for any meeting that's marked as block off. Um, and primarily, those meetings typically come over through a sync. We can sync with Google or Exchange calendars. 
uh, Lynn's asking for uh, for a project uh, to, to add the ability to filter to client or project number to the roadmap. That's actually something we've discussed, Lynn. So I think that's probably something that you will see in the future, but I will definitely go and double check that that's the case. Um, Ray asks if there's a way to assign multiple people to the same task. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, this actually kind of goes back to that question earlier about, hey, should I have one task or six in my schedules? Um, how granular should I get with detail? Uh, typically, I, again, I try to say, get, take it easy on your project managers and your creatives. You know, don't make a 150 task line schedule unless it's a task, a schedule that's going to run for a very long time. Um, where are my tasks here? I guess I've got to refresh this. Um, so whenever you look at a, a task on one of your projects, you can have as many assignments on those tasks as needed. Um, and each one of those assignments will turn into a card on this page. So if I look at this task here, for example, if I jump into the schedule, you'll see some of these tasks like this first one here for my kickoff meeting, I've got three different people assigned. I have an art and creative designer, I have a copywriter, and I have an account manager. Now we don't have specific assignments to the other two, but this is three assignments on the same task. Um, so yeah, you can have multiple people based off of discipline assigned to the same task if needed. Um, okay, and so uh, it looks like Trevor did follow up here saying, hey, as a traffic manager, can I assign uh, to a creative director and to the creative direct to assign their own uh, to their individual teams? Like, can you have, um, can you have a creative director be the one that um, that's effectively uh, like you're giving them a task to to um, to to manage their own teams, you could do that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I do have some some clients that will have, uh, for example, a uh, project management task in their uh, or a resourcing task in their schedules. So some of them to track time, but others um, as part of like a project setup. That's what they do. So they'd have a project setup task where they they do a number of things like get the project documentation in place and then begin to traffic and resource the project. Um, that that's entirely possible. You could build those into your schedules. And then one more question here from Ray has a follow up regarding: Can you assign multiple people to the same task? Yeah, they could have the same service. Um, I could do two account managers here, uh, and that's perfectly fine, right? I could say hey, this one should go to um, who uh, to Ann, right? But yeah, so it only cares that the line is here on the schedule, um, and it will make the assignment uh, have both of those assignments. Okay, so let's take a look at some templates I've built here um, on the back end of the system. Now, these are pretty vanilla, so um, you uh, take it easy on me <laughs> when you're looking at these. I just wanted a few items that I could use to show, you know, kind of how to utilize a more agile style project management. I've shown you the tools here, but let me show you kind of what a standard project setup for these would be. I actually built two based off of what I see my clients doing here um, quite a bit. Uh, this may not match your processes. If not, I, I'm sorry, uh, but hopefully uh, most of the time I see these two options here, right? Um, one, I just have an agile template. I actually built this uh, somewhat similar to how we manage our projects internally here. Um, we will use a bit more open-ended schedules, at least from a development side, um, when we're building parts of Workamajig here. Uh, this doesn't match what we use exactly, but it's kind of a, a boiled down version of it. So um, I've built a couple of different um, a couple of different <clears throat> uh, templates here. One is for just kind of an agile, more of like a digital or a, or a web design based template here. Uh, and it doesn't follow that standard uh, critical path. You know, this would kind of be your standard critical path type project. Hopefully this one isn't goofy. I don't remember what my, yeah, this one's fairly goofy, but but this is kind of what a standard web project would look like, right? And a, a critical path or, or a waterfall style project. Most of you probably have more extensive details in yours. I, this one's kind of slapdash, but you can see how it works out. It, it's basically saying, hey, this happens, then this, then this. And it's basically projecting the major milestones of your project, setting a certain number of days that those tasks typically take, and then setting the order that those tasks would occur in here. So the predecessors are really kind of what separate the two, right? This is what's saying, hey, this, you know, we can't start the wireframes until our site map is done. We can't start programming until both of those previous two tasks are done. So it gives you a means to, to structure a project. This is more of that critical path style management. Um, for Agile, we tend to keep more open-ended tasks. Um, it's kind of conducive to these Kanban boards where you can kind of move items in and out. 
Um, where did my agile ones go here? I have two that I built. Um, one is for agile here, kind of more from a project manager, or excuse me, from a web design based standpoint. Again, this is a, not necessarily a recommendation for how you do yours, but you'll notice that with the structure of this type of project, the tasks are a bit more open ended. Um, you know, it's basically, hey, we have development on this. Um, the users themselves will kind of communicate about what's needed for them here. I'll give them some specs. Um, and then if necessary, we can actually add an extra layer of something like to-dos to these to track the different development pieces. That's very similar to what we do currently um, here internally. Uh, and then for things like bug fixes, this is actually where this can really shine because you know we don't know what bugs we're gonna make when we first start to set out to develop something. Um, but this task gives us not only a place to put hours and assign users as those things come up, but if you're using to-dos, for example, you can have a change log of all of the bugs that have come in in the process of fixing those as well. Um, now, I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to go over to-dos today, but if you are interested, I would definitely recommend reaching out to your um, to your account manager. There's also extensive documentation in our support site, um, support.workamajig.com uh, um, regarding to-dos, but they're effectively just an extra detail piece for a task that says, hey, I've assigned you to a development task, um, but there are four certain action items on it currently, right? We need to, you know, build the page layout. We need to program the page and we need, you know, these different things. And effectively, you can just kind of mark those as complete in the task while having the task to put time to. So for an agile template here, it's a, it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot less rigid, right? I have no predecessors for these. All of my tasks are duration of project or they used to be, I guess I've changed two of these. I don't know what I was doing, but um, these should really match it. Um, I have a constraint of duration of project, basically saying that, hey, I'm gonna set a timeline for how long the development of this should take. And we're going to track within the tasks here, um, the individual items associated with that. So that keeps your projects fairly fluid here, um, these tasks would typically stay open for the duration of the project. Um, and you can basically use to-dos as an added wrinkle in these if needed um, to provide more information on what specifically that you need to do on these. So you may have seen I closed one earlier um, with that. Uh, and one of the things that you'll see on the Today Creatives page is you can actually have task cards hide unless they have open to-dos on them specifically. So for things like bug fixes, you can say, hey, hide this task unless I put a to-do in there saying, hey, there is two bugs or there are two bugs here to fix, um, that will basically make the task card appear for you. Uh, the, others, the other type of template that I use here are for more um, kind of monthly based uh, social, mar uh, social media marketing uh, style tasks. I mean, you can kind of use this for a couple of different things, but this is one that I've seen pretty commonly used in here as well. Um, this one's more of a uh, block based and it actually I've got it kind of uh, yeah I do have the month here now on this that keeps these from being duration of project, uh, but typically these would be within a month right. Uh, there may be multiple different uploads um, or things that need to be done over a time period it doesn't necessarily need to be done on the 16th, for example. Um, I see a lot of teams where they go, okay, for the month, we just have a certain number of, of posts that we've agreed to provide for these clients on these retainer-like projects. Uh, this gives you the ability to create those tasks um, and also um, kind of keep them up, up you know, uh, updated for them. So, you know, for, for Agile, I, I can't necessarily teach you how uh, to effectively, uh, you know, run your agency as Agile style of project management, but I would say that the, the keys for that here um, are three different things, right? You're using that Kanban board, the assignment management page is kind of more conducive to that, or the to-do view, which is also very similar to it. Um, and then the tile view from the Creatives Today page kind of allows you to move those tasks back and forth between the various columns and status pieces without kind of actually fully closing them in a time period. Um, so, and then your templates would be kind of the third piece of that, right? Having a couple of effective templates that allow you to build these projects um, and, and manage them in that way. Now I mentioned to-dos quite a bit here. Um, to-dos are something that we actually have kind of turned off on your projects by default here. Um, they are something that you can show um, in uh, there's used to do items over here. This is the option that shows those. That allows you to get more granular um, just to give you a preview of what these look like. Unfortunately, I won't have time to give you a full training on how to use these here today. Uh, but just as an example, uh, if I have the to do options turned on here within any task that I'm looking at, I have the option to create a to do list. So for like when you're looking at the the templates that I had previously where I just had um, items like bug fix or development, this allows you to come through. Let me see if I can find one of those. Uh, we've got a web programming task and a content development task here. Of course, all of these are not great, but um, well, this one actually, right, well, here we go. We have a bug fixes task right here. Um, 
now these are all terribly named. So typically, you know, this would be like, you know, bug reported, you know, maybe we'd have an issue number. This is kind of how we do things here internally. And then, you know, a description of the bug, right? And so this is something that you can use to say, okay, I have a task for someone to manage bug fixes. That's what they do. Um, but they, you know, would actually have to find those. So as the bugs come in, I add to do's to this task here, and then I add the detail. And then the user that, that picks these up can say, oh, okay, I worked on this. I put some notes in here and then I mark the to-do is done and it clears it off of that board here for you. Um, so that's kind of how to-dos work. In this, in this particular workflow, I think they really shine, uh, especially if you're trying to run a more agile style piece um, because to-dos, uh, you don't have to put time to them. They don't have specific date parameters. They're just married to the task that they're created for. And earlier, there was a question um, on if there's a page for to-dos kind of like this. There actually is. Uh, again, this is going a little bit beyond um, what, I, what I have time to go through here today, but there is also a to-do board here under the project manager application that will show you a list of all to-dos in the system, and you can also status those as well. This is really going down the rabbit hole. I have most of the agencies that I work with don't have don't fully use to-dos and the assignment management page um, and the creative style view. This is, again, um, for very specific use cases, uh, but you can manage to-dos the same way you could um, your, your, your tasks on the assignment management today page or the creatives today page. Okay, so let me jump into a few more questions here. Um, Judy was asking if I could give a quick overview of scheduling due dates within individually ta individual tasks. Um, sure, I actually think this is really important to understanding um, how work imaging resources items in the first place. Uh, when you open up a project, so actually let's start at a template level. If you look at a template, uh, I mentioned that for your project templates, we recommend most of your jobs come from templates. You know, you templatize, hey, when we, we do a lot of web work or we do a lot of collateral projects or whatever it is, um, you build those as templates. And part of what you're doing in those templates, at least from a critical path standpoint, is you're building a flow of the major milestones of your project. Oh, this one's terrible. Let me choose a different one other than that one. Um, there we go, this is a little bit better. So I basically have to find three different phases, right? Concepting, production, and then a client approval phase here. And then we build those major milestones. This is kind of a critical path piece, right? I've said, hey, these are the number of days these tasks typically take. These are the task milestones themselves. And then the predecessor column is the order that these occur in. Now, when you open a project from a template, or even if you open one from scratch, we use the project start date to build a schedule for you. So if you said that this project were to start on 2-2, um, that's actually what you would see in here, uh, that the, the work object would begin the first task or any task without a predecessor on that date. And then it would build a plan start and complete date for all of these tasks and the project as a whole um, based off of that start date. Now tasks begin to start showing red or showing late if they're set after the project due date. So when you open up a new project, Alaska, here's your start date, here's your due date. Um, if any of the tasks are projected to complete after the due date, that's when we highlight them as red or we show a task or schedule warning on the project or tasks. Um, additionally, there from resourcing perspective, this actually applies to both the staff schedule and the assignment management page. Um, we take, we, we actually uh, move the plan dates on any task based off of their activity. So if a task was planned to start on 2-1, and it doesn't actually start until 2-2, we will move the plan start date to 2-2 and we will cascade the rest of the schedule to fit that. That's kind of the traditional project management style. And that's also part of the reason why in the templates that I showed you, um, my, the constraints on my templates are things like duration of project. Um, I'm not as concerned about the start and due dates for the individual pieces in those tasks if I'm doing an, an agile style project management. Um, but for critical path, you can you can kind of nudge those around a little bit. You can set must start on or must finish on dates, for example. Um, and so that will kind of squeeze pieces in there a little, a little bit better. But, you know, today, one of our focuses was to kind of look at one of the more open-ended, uh, you know, the, the open more open-ended style projects. Um, so if you look at like the agile projects that I have in here, do, do, do. Let me pull up in this web agile project. Uh, most of mine, you'll see the constraint here is duration of project. This is actually something I set at the template level. And so if you see my project dates are 2 to 331 for this project, um, basically since it, the constraint is duration of project, these are the dates I open my job with. And these are also the dates that my project will give all of those tasks for their plan date. Right, so um, 
So if uh, the planned complete date for any one of these tasks was before March 31st, that's what throws the red status here for you. It's basically comparing these two. It's comparing the planned complete date for a task against the project due date that you've given this project. Okay, so we have a few minutes here. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to pop those in. Um, I just want to wrap up here today by saying, you know, that primarily for Agile, the, the primary tools that you have are this assignment management page and that Creative Today view over here. Um, how those work back and forth is pretty important to that. Um, I, we can provide some specifics. So if you want um, an idea of how this would work for your agency, you're of course more than welcome out to reach out to us here um, at support. You can reach us here at support at Um Your account manager can take you through those and answer questions by email. Um, we also can do training calls on this for you specifically. Uh, it tends to be easier to do that than the wide range here because a lot of different agencies use Workamajig in a lot of different ways here. Um, but if you do want to follow up with this or delve deeper into how it will work for your team specifically, I would encourage you to reach out. Again, that's support at workamajig.com. Um, if you're looking to set this up yourself, again, I'll just reiterate one more time. Um, the assignment management page here is locked for your team unless you unlock it. So if you're an admin or you have rights to adjust security settings for individual users, that is in your security settings under um, traffic assignment management screen, if I can spell it correctly. Uh, this one right here, that's what actually turns it on for a specific security group in your agency. Again, you can reach out to us if you have any issues finding this or turning it on. Um, and then on the creative side, it is that option to go into your system settings and then turn on the tile view. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I have for you today here. It looks like we've kind of gotten through um, all of the questions here. So, um, if anyone has any last ones here, uh, thank you guys all for coming. Again, if you want to review this webinar or view any of the upcoming webinars, you can go to our support site at support.workermagic.com, uh, search webinar. Um, oh, can you get custom fields to show up on these cards? Uh, I'm sorry, Steph, I must have missed that one. Um, I must have missed that one in the list of questions. Uh, the question here is, can you get custom fields to show up on these cards? Um, not really, because there's really no task level custom custom fields. So I guess it depends on what, is there something specific that you're looking for? Like a, a project custom field or, uh, because your team would probably, if they're looking to get to uh, project level custom fields, okay, yeah. Right now there's no ability to show those. The team would have to go into um, into the project itself to see those those custom field details. So they can jump into the dashboard from the cards and jump into the custom fields either on the right-hand side, yeah, there they are, um, here or into the custom fields um, area here on the left-hand side, depending on where you have it. But yeah, not, not on the card specifically. Sorry, I guess I missed that question when I was looking through here. Okay. So thank you all for coming here. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, again, if you guys need anything or you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at support at workamajig.com. All right, thank you everybody.